over the course of the weekend, you had a terrible basketball game on Saturday. That is one of the worst playoff games I've ever seen. I don't even know what the final score was. Let me pull it up right. 89 to 80, 84 to 80. That is a 1990s Knicks versus Kings game. And across the board, both those teams were brutal. Paul George's regress to whatever form prompted the criticism that I think all of us had and should have had before he played well in the second round of these playoffs. The Sun shot 20% from the three-point line, 20%, 36% from the field. Chris Paul didn't hit a three, 0 for 3. Devin Booker didn't hit a three, 0 for 5. And yet the Suns found a way to win. And the Bucs had a similar game, not as atrocious, not as ugly, not a total dumpster fire. But yesterday, Milwaukee's win over Atlanta came after a terrible first half in which Milwaukee in that first half shot 21.4% from the three-point line, in which most of the guys, not Giannis, Giannis was awesome the whole way through, did not play well, and in which the Hawks eventually built a 15-point lead. And, and here's the, the truth of the NBA, a, a reality of being a champion, especially, especially in the NBA, less true in the National Football League, because obviously it's one and done in the playoffs and sort of true in Major League Baseball. At least in the NBA, to be an NBA champion, you almost always have to find a way in the postseason to win at least one game where you play awful, where you play badly. Great teams, championship teams, find ways to win when they shouldn't. The Bucks did that yesterday. That Atlanta team was remarkably in rhythm and confident in the first half. They should have been up by a ton more points when that half ended. And if you watch Milwaukee kind of chipped away at the end of the second quarter. And the Suns played the worst bat— that's the worst basketball game they've played this year. That's one of the worst basketball games they've played in, in two years. Devin Booker, 8 of 22. Chris Paul, 6 of 22. And maybe just as shocking, he had four turnovers. CP3 never turns the ball over. This was the game the Suns are supposed to lose. Clippers go down 0 2. We know the Clippers came back from 0 2 deficits in the first and second round. Suns win their first two games at home. They lose that game three, and then you come into game four, and the Suns can't shoot. Devin Booker's got the broken nose, mask on, mask off, isn't really sure what to do, right? Looks way off. Chris Paul, second game back from being out more than a week, COVID health and safety protocols. Chris Paul was so gassed, he looked like me when I play sports. Do you see this? They tried not to show up, but a couple timeouts, Chris Paul surrounded by his teammates, Early in the game, by the way, not like the fourth quarter, third quarter, second quarter, hands on his knees, huffing and puffing. This is the game, if you're Phoenix, you're supposed to lose. And by the way, it's the game the Clippers are supposed to take. And the fact the Suns found a way to gut it out, to win that game, to play good enough, ugly enough, tough enough, gritty enough to get the win, that is what champions do. And not everybody is awful. DeAndre Ayton was incredibly good. And later in the show, if there's time, I hope there's time. There's a lot of things I want to get to. I do want to play DeAndre Ayton's praise for Chris Paul and how Chris Paul, who I've criticized a lot on the show, and rightfully so, accurately, every single time, Chris Paul's found the right place, the right instrument, I think, maybe for his opus. I like the Suns to win the whole thing. I'm a little biased. I've got the Suns at 18-1 to to be NBA champions. I bet them a long time ago. Yesterday, or excuse me, two days ago, Saturday, Game 4, showed me why the Suns can get it done. You find a way to win those kind of games uh, on a night where your stars can't hit a three, when your stars are terrible, when your entire team makes one out of every three shots, where you only make one out of every five three-pointers and you win that game on the road to go up 3-1, that is the kind of DNA, the kind of approach, the kind of mental toughness that champions have to have. You find a way to win when you shouldn't. And, and the Bucks game wasn't as ugly. And, and I'm going to get into some Trey Young criticism in a little bit. But suffice it to say that Milwaukee was not the best team on the floor for, for most of that game. They weren't. I thought Atlanta played better. That, that Atlanta crowd was on fire, which was really cool about it. How nice is it? How refreshing is it to start to hear an arena full of people going nuts? It feels like normal life. I don't know where wherever you're listening – I hope it's like that where you are. L.A. is starting to feel normal. In fact, my drive today, I don't know about the guy. I don't know about Alvin and Garrett. There's traffic again. I usually leave kind of late now when I come down to hang out at Jim Studios here in Southern California. Traffic was unbelievable. I'll take it. Normalized coming back. 
Real crowds are coming back. That Hawks crowd I thought was going to push Atlanta over the top. And Milwaukee found a way to do it. Giannis finally, for the love of God, thank God Giannis, and he took a couple threes, I think, and, and hit one. But Giannis started to play like the player that he is. And this is what Shaq has said on TNT. I'm going to quote him because he's right, and, and Chuck has said it. There's not a player in the NBA right now who has the physical skills, the size, the length, the strength, the quickness of Giannis Antetokounmpo. It's, it's remarkable what he can do physically. And, and he can't shoot, but he can handle the ball. He can start at the top of the key. He can also get down on the block. And, and to see the Bucks just feed him the rock again and again, Several times just starting in the paint, like he's a center, which he needs. To, that's the thing about Giannis that makes him so special. Yeah, he can be your point forward to a degree, right? Handle the ball, begin the attack, play downhill, attack the rim, get to the free throw line, make half of those, maybe get some buckets, open up the corners for the guys. But I like seeing him down there in the paint, back to the basket, getting the ball, backing guys down. That aggression from Milwaukee. That ability to not give up as they played a really bad first half. The Suns' ability to win a game where they were totally and utterly atrocious and awful. That is what championship teams do. It's why you're almost certainly going to see Suns-Milwaukee in the NBA Finals. I think the Suns are going to win the whole thing. Despite what happened on Saturday, that is the most consistent team and now the healthiest team, to a degree, right? Chris Paul is going to get back into rhythm. He's going to get back into shape. I think Devin Booker is going to figure out how to deal with his mask, not a mask, play the way that he needs to play with that pain. And, and, and give the Clippers credit. They didn't do a lot well on Saturday. They did make Devin Booker feel them. I mean, there were so many times they set picks, and they would just lean their chest a little bit right into his face. And you could see a couple times where he just bumped his nose in the shock of pain. Good. Be physical. It's part of the deal. But the Suns are mostly healthy, right, to a degree. They don't have this Kawhi Leonard thing, which would have changed the entire, the entire series. The Suns are the most consistent team in the NBA that remain, and maybe overall, Saturday notwithstanding. In the one game, they have a, a down game that they win. And the Bucks are the other healthy team. They've got their guys. They're ready to roll. They're going to play each other. I know Ty Lue is all chill. We can just, you know, let's take it a game at a time. Clippers are done. They're done. They're dead in the water. It's over. I, I think Atlanta could still could still rise up and win the series. I don't think they will, but we've seen some susceptibility from, from Milwaukee. We've seen them play badly and play down to their competition and lose. That's another reason I like what we saw yesterday. Great teams, championship teams, find ways to win when they're not supposed to. The Bucks look like they might lose that game yesterday. The Suns were awful on Saturday. And each finding a way to win, I think, showed something about those teams. 